aboard the Nitty Stew podcast. My name is Leanne. I am the Nitty Stew. Stew if you're short. <laughs> what is stew if you're new here is short. I'm short. That is so rude. Um, yeah. Oh dear. This is how it's going to go, I see. All right. Anyways, I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to carry on and try and get my spiel out. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. I am a Canadian flight attendant and a knitter. Stu is short for stewardess. And this is my YouTube channel where I talk about those two parts of my life, the knitting and the flight attending, and bring you with me on the road to show you some beautiful Canadian cities and bring you to the yarn shops when I can. And today's episode is from a place I've been trying to get a long overnight in for quite some time. Today I am here in Vancouver beautiful city and it's February so it could be the normal which is somewhat overcast gloomy rainy chilly but today it pulled out all the stops and I have some beautiful footage for you today of this wonderful city first of all I will do a land acknowledgement as I have never prod podcast from here before. The city of Vancouver acknowledges that it is situated on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. It is with deep respect that I am here today and really happy to have the opportunity to film. I'm a little concerned about the audio quality as there is a window behind me and it's rush hour at this point and there's also uh, a fridge running in the background, all of these ambient noises that I hope won't be too distracting. Anyways, uh, welcome everyone. This is episode 29, I believe. And thank you to anyone who's been here a very long time, or if you're semi-new or brand new and the algorithm introduced you to me, I can be found on Ravelry as The Nitty Stew. I'm pretty active on Instagram as well as The Nitty Stew. And I do have a coffee or Ko-Fi account if you would like to support the podcast for expenses that occur. And today I had that. I had to take a Lyft slash an Uber to the local yarn shop. And sometimes I'm not brave enough to just do local transit. So um, yeah, those types of donations really help, uh, you know, offset those costs. And I'm not spending it on yarn. Um, it's to bring you this content. And I'm just going to grab my tea and perhaps you would like to grab your making or crafting and join me for some knitting chat and the footage from Vancouver today. Okay, so welcome aboard and I'm really, really digging my tea right now. I'm having an Oregon peppermint organic tea today. So it's, uh, it's hitting just right. I feel like there's a lot of people sick right now and my ears were popping on descent the last few days and just not my regular energetic self. So I hope I'm not fighting something which I suspect I might be. However, um, you know, tea's always a good idea. I called down to the front desk to ask if they could send up a normal size. I didn't ask if they could send it up. I'm, I'm not fancy that way. <laughs> I just said, is there normal mugs? Cause this is like a teeny tiny espresso type mug that was in the uh, in the coffee setup and they said oh we'll run one up to you so I might get uh, a knock on the door and that's what that is and yeah shall we launch into the format for today I have some finished objects to share I have two of those I have three works in progress and one imminent cast on that I'm particularly psyched about and can't wait to share with you so that's the plan for today First of all, I will tell you what I'm wearing, which is one of my fin finished objects. This is a test knit that I was lucky enough to get in on because I was Johnny on the spot. And it's a test knit called the Coastland Cowl by Anina Yuti. She's a Finnish designer and she has the Coastland shawl. And when she came out with the Coastland Cowl, I jumped on it. I'm subscribed to her newsletter, so I got Am I subscribed to her newsletter or was this on Instagram? Either way, I was lucky because she did it as a first come first serve uh, to be a participant and I love it. I finished it in seven days and I made size one. There's two sizes. I will take it off so you can have a look at the structure. It is a beautiful bandana style. 
textured cowl that is knit flat uh, diagonally with this beautiful lace panel and then it's got a garter um, other side of the panel. I just absolutely adore it. I actually like wearing it with my hair underneath it so that it kind of sits up like that, keeps my neck and the back of my neck nice and cozy. So yes, this is it checks all the boxes for me. I had a very special skein of yarn from Eula of Wool and Twine Fiber Studios that I had purchased a while back and I was saving it for something special and this was it. I really enjoyed making this and more so I've been enjoying uh, wearing it a lot. I think maybe bandana cowls are highly practical and I really like them. Uh, my other favorite uh, is the shift by Andrea Mowry and I am so going out there on a limb saying this might be maybe number one my very first uh, the first on my list of favorite bandana cowls and I've been wearing it so much um, the details about this and by the way anything I speak about will be uh, detailed in the description notes below the video and then you can usually click through to purchase the pattern uh, or also see my Ravelry page or the designers page and uh, yeah this this um, pattern will be released on February 16th so that is this Friday if I get this out before then then you can uh, anticipate that that will be coming um, very simple pattern as far as techniques go even the lace it's uh, it's only an eight round or sorry eight row repeat and I just separated the different sections with a stitch marker as I always do and it has these beautiful shells and just some yarn overs um, I'd say the trickiest part for me was the the point of the shell it's a it's a knit four together so I really had to be careful making sure I'd never done a knit four together to be honest so I pushed as Anina had suggested all four stitches to the very tippy top of the needle and then just made sure that I had got my uh, picked up through all the the loops of it and I think it turned out very well I only ended up using um, 86 grams of the wool and twine it's a BFL Masham DK and it's 240 meters per hundred grams called artichoke and I still have this much left over and it was, uh, I think, the perfect use for it. It's so cozy and soft. So if you have a special skein, a special skein of DK or something that you've been holding on to, the pattern has two sizes. Size one is 18 stitch gauge over garter stitch. I had to go down two needle sizes to get that. And then the other one is a 16 stitch gauge and you can get a larger or a smaller um, cowl based on, on your gauge and what needle size you choose to use. So highly recommend the pattern and I hope that uh, you might consider making this because I think I would make more. <laughs> I really enjoy it. It might be a great gift too for, for friends. One more thing about my Coastland cowl that I cannot forget to mention is one of my intentions for this year was to seam properly, not just whip stitch, figure out how to join. I did an actual mattress stitch. <laughs> Check it out. It's far from perfect but perfect from afar. <laughs> Look it! All right, so yeah, I had admitted that for 17 years I've basically avoided seaming. <laughs> and uh, I watched a tutorial by Isolde Teague and I did it. So excited. Um, you know, as with anything, if I just take my time and practice, and YouTube is wonderful for that because you can just slow down the video if I needed slow motion, if I couldn't quite tell where she was slipping the, the needle under to join on either side, I could stop and pause and do that again and again. And I did it. So I would do it again. And yay, I had to share that. Okay, so that's my Coastland cowl, my first finished object. Finished object number two, um, speaking of his old Teague, I finished my muscle bra. My first muscle bra? Will it be my last? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, it is awfully portable and handy. And I'd shown it to you on the last episode. And there it is, in all its to be glory. <laughs> uh, 
I used Arcane Fiberworks sock in a colorway called Busy Bee. Tyler is an Alberta dyer. And check that out. Like, my word. Zero pooling. Just these little dashes of the, I'd say like a light beigey brown and the cream. Uh, instead of making socks, I have myself a muscle bra. However, I did lose at Yarn Chicken, so I had a little bit left over uh, of another one of his colorways, and I used that for the inside, the other end of the tube. If you are not familiar with the muscle bra, I'll give you a quick uh, Coles Notes version of the hype. And the reason that I jumped on it was because you start knitting and then you check your gauge and your size is determined as a result of that and how many stitches per inch you get and what size you go for in the chart, which is very well done. As old I think has eight sizes uh, or more for, not eight sizes, but eight different gauges I think that you can use to get um, the size that you'd like. I ended up using a US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle, which gave me eight stitches per inch. And uh, I think for me, I, I tried to follow the measurements from Nitty Natty, who has a YouTube channel and uh, has made many, many, I think well over probably six or something. So I followed her guidance and, and made the length that she had done. But I don't really care for it slouchy on me. Uh, I am a, a snug beanie gal. So I, I actually don't mind it at all when I fold it up. And look how many layers of fa fabric I've got there. That is a warm toque that we call in Canada. <laughs> Very warm hat, um, which would be perfect for chilly, chilly days of winter, which we have had, but it's been very mild actually all around here, um, where I'm from in Calgary anyway. So that's my muscle bra. And I had some people uh, who mentioned that they had wanted to make one, but they they were concerned about the cast on, which is an invisible crochet cast on, or you can use a method of choice that you pick up and start increasing. I heard someone say it looks like a cat bomb. <laughs> that might be inappropriate, but I mean, it does. Uh, I know that Melissa of Stitches Be Slipping, she actually just does a regular uh, small circumference cast on and then just pulls it tight at the end too. So don't be scared. Uh, also, I watched Nitty Natty's tutorial on how to begin the cast on. And I had done it once before when I'd made the Elijah Elephant by Azolda Teague which is the only other thing I'd ever made by her. So I'm um, watching a lot of her podcasts and really enjoying learning a bit more about design and those types of things. And also she inspired me to want a jumpsuit. I'm wearing a jumpsuit um, that is like a onesie, essentially. Um, I'll just insert a picture of me wearing it. And also when my friend Tracy of Oliver Rain Knits and I, we went to the Creekside Fiber Festival and Charity of Brian Dye Works was wearing this coverall, like pair of, like a onesie. And I'd seen Isolde wearing one. And then we saw her, uh, Ch Charity wearing it. And she looks so cute. I actually have a, like an aviator suit, I guess you'd call it for one of my Blythe dolls. And Tracy and I thought we should get matching <laughs> coveralls and do a photo shoot of the Blythe dolls and ourselves. That might be a little bit out there, but in the meantime, I'm really actually enjoying this um, this coverall set suit that I bought from Amazon, and uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not sponsored and I don't have an affiliate link, but um, I'm happy to link it below if you're you know channeling your inner 70s vibes. It's very comfy, and the person who invented stretch denim should get a Nobel Prize in my books. <laughs> so yeah. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but uh, those are my two finished objects. I do have my works in progress that I'd like to discuss, and perhaps I should show footage of Vancouver first and then do my works in progress. So how about I do that, and then we'll meet back here. Vancouver is named after George Vancouver, one of the first Europeans to explore the area. Some nicknames for Vancouver include Van, Van City, 
or Hollywood of the North due to its role as a major filming location for countless movies and TV shows. The official motto of the city is, by sea, land, and air we prosper. Vancouver is often chosen as one of the top cities in the world to live in. However, along with Toronto, Vancouver is ranked as the most expensive city in Canada to live in. To put some numbers behind that, Vancouver's benchmark price for a detached home is average at $2.1 million. An attached home price is $1.24 million. Condo apartment ranges from $817,000. The population of the greater or the metro Vancouver area is 2.6 million people, making it the third largest metro area in Canada after the greater Toronto area and Montreal. The greater Vancouver area includes many municipalities, including North Vancouver, West Vancouver, the city of Vancouver itself, Burnaby, Richmond, Surrey, White Rock, Abbotsford, Coquitlam. Quite a few municipalities are included in that number. People who live in Vancouver are called Vancouverites. Over 50% of Vancouverites are visible minorities, and over 50% are non-native English speakers. The largest visible minority are Chinese, which is 27%. What you're seeing here is the Olympic Cauldron, which was lit on February 12, 2010, after the longest national torch relay in Olympic history. Vancouver has hosted many international events, including the 1954 Commonwealth Games, Expo 86, which my junior high actually sent a bunch of students to, the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup, and as I just mentioned, the 2010 Winter Olympics and Paralympics. Forestry is the largest industry in Vancouver, followed by tourism. Vancouver is one of the wettest cities in Canada, known for its rainy winters, and it's also one of its warmest cities in the winter. Snow falls on average eight days per year and doesn't usually stay on the ground for long. Vancouver has its own urban planning and architectural concept called Vancouverism, which centers on high-rise residential towers with commercial bases, public transport, and green spaces and view corridors. The city has some well-known areas that aren't technically neighborhoods, such as Yale Town and Chinatown, and where I was here in this video segment, Gastown, where I got to check out the Gastown Steam Clock, which was an engineering marvel created by Raymond L. Saunders. It blows the whistles every quarter hour and plays the Westminster chimes. I should probably clarify that while Vancouver is the largest city in Western Canada and the province of British Columbia, it is not the capital of British Columbia, that's Victoria. Most people actually think it is the capital of BC, but it is not. It is a lovely city, so much to see, but I needed to get to the yarn shop. So I grabbed my coffee and off I went. As I mentioned earlier, I did need to take an Uber over to Bad Anna's, which was open on the day I was there. So it was Monday. And so I popped in to see what they had in store. And here you go. I hope you enjoy the footage.
Bad Anna's certainly had a great selection of wool and fiber and all kinds of lovely local hand-dyed yarns and they were very friendly and lovely. The yarn shop that I probably would have done more damage in <laughs> would have been Wet Coast Wools, which sadly was not open on Monday. And uh, yeah, they carry all the woolly wools like Rauma, Holst, Hillsvog. So probably for the best. I do apologize because man, there are a lot of yarn shops in the Vancouver and Lower Mainland area. To name a few, there are uh, there's one called Sweet Georgia Yarns, which is a dyeing studio. They carry their own yarn. And then Wet Coast Wools, as I mentioned. And also Bad Anna's has a sister store called Bad Rabbit, which is in New Westminster. The Lower Mainland also has a place called Black Sheep Yarns, which I have ordered from. Um, there's a Valley Yarn, I believe, which is in Surrey. Once Upon a Sheep. Um, which is in Maple Ridge and oh my goodness I am probably forgetting others there's online shops your next knit three bags full and yeah I apologize if I have forgotten other yarn shops please leave those in the comments below and I can keep a list for whenever anyone asks me for recommendations but thank you so much to the friendly staff at at Bad Anna's Sarah Kelsey and Hazel the doggo, who wasn't impressed that I did not have treats. I hope you enjoyed the footage of Vancouver. Now on to works in progress. The first of which I showed you on my last podcast. I probably should have uh, reviewed that to see how much I got and how far I've gotten since, or put a stitch marker. But this is my fletching that I'm making a top-down round yoke colorwork pullover by Jessica McDonald. I'm knitting it in Rama Fino in spring green and natural white. I think I want to try this on. Should we, should we do it on live TV? <laughs> Let's do it. Um, absolutely having a blast knitting this, even though I'm done the color work part, I haven't lost interest at all. It's been my companion as I could not watch podcasts and knit on the coastline cowl. I actually had to concentrate on those lace repeats and the, uh, making sure I was doing the right thing on the right and the wrong side. But this one is just round and round and stuck in that baby. And, oh, hey, we're getting, we're getting there. So, let's see. Well, I would say I've probably got a solid uh, another inch maybe to go. And then do the bottom ribbing. And then just onto the sleeves. I really like the fit so far. It's it's third time the charm for me, I believe, with this Rama. I've done a couple other attempts to make a sweater or garment with them, uh, with it, and it's so light, so warm, and I did block it already. What do you think? I mean, uh, I, I get and I understand why Rama is so popular because. Yes, it, it did bloom and, and fill out any of the gaps. The color work here is, in my opinion, perfect if you are new to color work or wanting to try because the repeats are very close together or um, the color changes are close and you wouldn't have to worry too much about tension. And also it's got some rest rounds between uh, the color work sections. And I think it's just, it gives a lot of bang for your buck. Oh, I'm really enjoying this. So this is the, my fletching by um, Jessica McDonald. This is where it's at and I will keep working on it and I'm loving it. Work in progress number two is another pullover sweater. I am making the Trista by Jennifer Steingass, also known as Knit Love Wool. I showed the yarn for this, I think, on my, my last podcast. It's Istex Let Lopi. And I, I'm very pleased with it so far. It is a bit safe as far as colors go. Um, very, very me colors, but I mean, green, beige, white, and dark brown. Uh, some of the projects I'd seen had a bit more 
pizzazz, if you will. But my husband said, maybe sometimes you just need a new trolley end. So uh, I actually am really thinking this is going to be highly wearable. I'm knitting it specifically with uh, the intentions of wearing it in white, white Horse in the fall when I get to go up to see our friends up there. Um, Crux Fibers, Brittany, and also Knit My Way Home, uh, Loretta. They have invited us up again for a little knitting weekend. So I will, I plan to be wearing my Trista. And I don't think that's uh, uh, that, that's not going to be a problem at all. It's knitting up rather quickly. Um, now that I've figured out a few things, <laughs> this pattern should. This is my first Jennifer Steingas, so I was reading through some projects, and one of the things is that the necklines um, are very big. So I'm actually knitting a size four of the pattern, and I cast on for the smallest size neck. So that's a good thing. I'm really glad I did that. Um, I have also blocked this too. I, I regularly do that. I start knitting on a on a yoke and then I I block it to see how it's fitting. And this is the smallest size neckline stitches, and there it's still quite wide, which is a okay with me because let lopi is an outer garment for this girl because I I uh, could not wear this next to my neck. No way, not a chance. Um, but it's so warm and light, and I just love the way it looks in color work with the heathered colors. Um, the colors that I chose are, my main color is pine green, which is 1407. My contrasting color, this which kind of looks white, but it's actually not, it's a very light gray and it's called light ash heather. And then uh, this beige brown is called oatmeal heather. And then the dark, dark brown is called chocolate. Um, the only trouble I ran into was when I modified to do the smallest neckline and then I wanted to increase out to get to the size four number of stitches. I had a bit of trouble with um, how my increases looked. So that's again why I blocked it and I think it looks fine as I'm showing you here. And then I decided, well, I'm just going to keep doing those increases. So the increases I was doing was a left lift lifted increase and or sorry a make one left the pattern calls for an invisible left lifted increase and that it is not interchangeable the stitch count is different and so i had to rip back three times and there were some swear words <laughs> i couldn't figure it out so um i actually ended up looking in some of the comments and they had said uh, one person had said you have to do an invisible left lift and increase so that you get two stitches between um, the increases, not just one increase. Yeah, so I'm not sure if that made sense the way I was describing it, but if you have made the tray style, you will probably understand. And once I watched the video on how to do an invisible left lift and increase, it was actually quite fun. Although, I don't really want to point this out, but I'm going to. Uh, my color work isn't great. There are, there are spots where I know it's supposed to be there's one, um, a white stitch and it's a brown stitch. So I think when I did some of those increases, uh, I might have picked up the stitches out of order on the following round. So anyway, I'm still going to keep going on this. I'm not going to rip back because I, again, far from perfect, perfect from afar is sort of my motto at this point. And I'm just enjoying the process of knitting with Let Lopi. So. That's my work in progress number two, the tray stuff. My third and final work in progress is the Gatin Balaclava by Temple of Knit, also known as Simone Alexandra Urso, I believe is how you say her name. And I'm working at this point on just the length of the head with my uh, cucumber slash pickle progress keeper. These are made by my sister and her friends, Mud Pie. <laughs> uh, it's just telling me now that I don't have to increase anymore. It's uh, So you begin this working with uh, one strand of light fingering weight yarn and one strand of silk mohair. And I got my hands on some Focolana Arweta, which I've had a lot of curiosity around and Galt House of Yarn, which is out in Ontario, carried it and I got myself um, a couple skeins of it. I started knitting a sock 
and it wasn't, uh, it didn't work out. So I pulled it back and then I started working on cowl, the cargo cowl, cowl by Crea Bea. And it was, I realized quickly that I wasn't going to have enough yarn and or enough of the um, silk mohair that I wanted to use. So I had already started the, the in the round part for the cowl and then I carried on and I found this uh, pattern and it, it starts bottom up. So I'll try it on for you. <laughs> so I am using, oh um, yeah, the Ficolana Arweta, which I'm enjoying a lot. Uh, I still have quite a lot of that. This is the marzipan colorway. And then some of the leftover brush baby up sorry alpaca silk from Crux Fibers, uh, which I'm obsessed with in the ptarmigan colorway. I used it in my um, fleur shawl. And I think I might be ruined now. I, I don't think I can just use mohair anymore. I think I need brush sorry and silk <laughs> specifically. So um, this is what I've got left of it. And Brittany actually does, uh, she is doing some dyeing right now. So she, while it might not be this exact same, uh, it will be very similar to this. And I think they're knitting up really nicely together. And this is how far I've got. So you start in the round and you start to increase for the head portion. And I think it says, I probably have a good uh, let's say two inches to go and then I start decreasing for the top and then at the end you pick up around and do the ribbing or the face hole. <laughs> Why do I need a balaclava? I I don't know. I I just do. So <laughs> I, um, I'm enjoying knitting on this quite a lot. Uh, it's got a garter rib, kind of a garter mistake rib. I think that's what it's called. I like that texture. I did have to pay attention because the increasing does require that you watch what you're doing for the ribbing, making sure you're knitting to and purling to in the correct spots. So again, uh, an engaging knit, but not too, too much of a time commitment. So this won't take very long to be finished. Whether I run out of yarn or not before I get another skein of the ptarmigan, well, that might be determining whether I finish it soon or not, but I have one on its way, one of the, um, skeins from Brittany so yeah I'm doing working on that so that's my last work in progress well that didn't take very long I all of a sudden realized that the sun is now behind a building and sunset will be happening soon so I will wrap up the podcast so I have decent light and then I actually need to get ready and be down in the lobby for my shuttle pickup to go home and I do have a couple of days off which I'm really looking forward to and then back out again so yes, I will discuss my final um, imminent cast on, which I'm really excited to be part of. It's a test knit for the lovely Amy Palco of a Meaning the Meaningful Stitch podcast. She was inspired to work with the yarn from the Scottish Wool Festival, which is a wonderful Scottish blend, and it's from Eva. Now, Amy was wondering and thinking, and she wondered what would knitted tartan look like. Now I have absolutely no Scottish uh, heritage in my uh, according to 23andMe so uh, Eva said that if you want to be one of us you're one of us. So I have spent basically the last three days choosing my tartan colors. <laughs> Clan Leanne <laughs> and um, this was the main color no question at all because it is actually Scottish Wool Festival yarn Oh, this, the light is toast. Oh dear. Oh, it is the most glorious natural color. It is called Tate, which is named after a Scottish clan from the Scottish Wool Festival yarn. It is grown in Scotland, Millspun in Yorkshire. And it is the most glorious blend of 80% Shetland and 20% Cheviot. It's a four ply. So this is my um, main color, or color A, for my The Gither, which is what it's called. And it's going to be a beautiful wrapped infinity scarf. Um, color number two is this black 
It's Cast Iron by Brooklyn Tweed, a lovely lofty um, targi, American targi. And then the final color is also very special. This is the yarn that I bought from Olana Knets in Newfoundland, who is a natural dyer, and she forged uh, the colors, or the, the dye stuff that made this color here called Elderberry. So this is going to be my The Gither cowl, or an, uh, The Gither scarf, depending on uh, how long you make it. So I'm excited to be testing it. I've got um, my plan in place, and there's three different sections, and each time uh, one of the colors switches to be the main color, and then the other gets to be the contrast, and then the accent color. So they, they interplay, so that's why I can get away with just using three skeins. And I think that's genius. And I know that Amy is also working, I think, on version three. I haven't watched her latest podcast, but I think she shows uh, her third sample, and I think it might be a shorter one even. So that is my next imminent cast on. And here's what I have to do is a provisional cast on, which was also an intention that I am going to learn how to do it. So I watched a video by Laura Nelkin, and she shows how to do a provisional cast on using, uh, she calls it stitch saver, stitch saver um, but it's, you know, the barber cord. <laughs> so I'm going to do a provisional cast on, not with crochet, but using um, the barber cord. So that will be, that will be soon when, uh, when I get a few minutes and I can sit down and, and cast on. So, okay, like the light is fading. I'm looking very light and kind of cool. So uh, I'm sorry that I have to wrap it up so quickly. I hope it didn't feel too rushed. Um, I would love to hear what you're working on. Never did get my large mug actually, but that's okay. Um, that's all fine and dandy. If you're like me, uh, you, you might have cast on itis and want to make all the things. Winter seems to be going by very quickly and I, I'm very inspired by a lot of the patterns that I have, not just in my library, but that I'm seeing on Instagram and around. And it's, uh, it's hard. I mean, we've only got two hands, right? And so much time in a day. Um, I will uh, throw out a couple of inspo um, knits. I mean, in case there's more that you want. <laughs> To add to your queue. <laughs> I have in my uh, library, I believe it's Making Magazine, and there's a pattern called Arctic Cardigan by Carrie Bostick, Carrie Bostick Hogue, and I've been meaning to knit that for quite some time, and I have left over Brooklyn Tweed Quarry, which is, uh, you know, that's pretty luxury yarn. It's very bulky slash, but it's lightweight again because of the nature of how it's spun. So I'd like to make that. I also uh, purchased a pattern called Sycamore Arm Warmers by Marie Wallen. I just want to make all the color work, everything. <laughs> I want to work with all the light fingering and Shetland wool. So that is something I would like to work on and maybe work up to a Marie Wallen knit or perhaps um, yeah, a Jennifer Beale, which is someone I'd like to knit this year. Um, anyways, I just wanted to throw out some inspiration and maybe uh, check out those patterns. I'm sure you have plenty in your favorites on your own, and I would love to hear what you're working on. So whether it is crochet or knit or uh, spinning or weaving, whatever you're doing, I hope is bringing you joy and that you're staying happy and healthy until I see you next time here on the Nitty Stew. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye.